Okay, this is section 3.3, video 2. So in the first video, we focused a lot about what we can find from taking the first derivative, what kind of applications we can get from taking the first derivative of a function. And we found that we can find whether a function is increasing or decreasing, um, whether a function has a local max or a local min. Those are really the two main focuses of our first derivative. Um, in this video, we're going to focus more on the second derivative, and then we're going to do a few examples at the end of how to put it all together. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to talk about is um, we have this definition. It says, if the graph, graph of f lies above all of its tangent, tangents, I guess, tangents, on an interval i, then it's called concave upward on i. If the graph of f lies below all of its tangents, it's going to be called concave downward. All right, concavity in a kind of a more general sense is just kind of how the curve is curving, um, lack of a better way of saying it. So let's take a look at what we mean by that. So if I've got a curve that looks something like this, okay, you should be able to kind of see that this is looks like it's curving or opening upwards. Okay, you should be able to see that the curve is opening upwards. And what the definition up here says that if the graph of F lies above all of its tangents. So if I were to take on this specific graph that I drew here and to draw a tangent line anywhere on the graph, I don't care what point you give me, anywhere on this graph, every tangent line or every little tangent um, slope that I could draw here would lie beneath the curve which really means that the graph lies above all of its tangents. And since the graph lies above all of its tangents, it's considered to be concave up. And then likewise, I could draw one that kind of goes the other direction. You should be able to see that that basically looks like it's opening down. So when it's opening down like that or curving down, we say it's concave downward or concave down, and again, the idea is the graph now lies below all of its tangents because there's no way for me to draw a tangent here which is anywhere other than above the curve. Every single possible tangent to that graph would be above, so the graph itself is below the curve. So the first one over here is considered concave up. Um, sometimes I abbreviate it with just a CC and an arrow up. I don't know if that's like official. I would write it out if I were you just in case. Um, or the one on the right is concave down. And again, sometimes I will just abbreviate it with a CC and then an arrow down. Okay, so now how do we figure this out? How do I actually get the concavity? How do I know without actually looking at the graph? Hopefully visually that makes sense. Again, opening up is concave up, opening down is concave down. What does it actually mean? So here's your concavity test. Concavity test says this. If we were to take the second derivative, and the second derivative is positive for all x's in our interval i, then the graph is concave up on i. And if you were to take the second derivative and it's less than 0 for all x's in i, then the graph is considered concave down. So the easiest way to think about this is a positive second derivative means concave up, a negative second derivative means concave down. Hopefully those actually make some sense. Now what does that mean? What is a second derivative? Well a second derivative is a derivative of a derivative. So think about this one, kind of piece this together in your head. The derivative tells you a rate of change. Well, the derivative of a derivative tells you the rate of change of the rate of change. So it's how is my slope changing? Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? So is it concave up? Is it concave down? Is the rate of change of your slope increasing or is it decreasing? 
Again, easiest way to think of it is it just makes the entire graph open up and down, but that's really what the second derivative is. It's the derivative of the derivative. It's the rate of change of the slopes of the original graph. How are those slopes changing? Okay, so we have a definition that says a point P on a curve, y equals f of x, is called an inflection point if f is continuous and the curve changes from concave up to concave down or from concave down to concave up. In other words, if I have a point on a graph and the concavity changes, goes from concave up to down or from down to up, it's called an inflection point. Okay, and it's a very, um, again, it's a very important thing. It's, it's, it's where the concavity changes. And it has to be a point on the graph because the graph must be continuous there. It can't be a discontinuous graph at that point. While concavity could change, is if there's no point there, there's no inflection point. And then we also have this thing which is called the second derivative test. The second derivative test is really another way of finding local maxes and mins. Let's see if this makes any sense. If we are told that the first derivative is zero, so this is our if statement. If this is a true statement, meaning we know we have a critical value, and if we know the second derivative is positive, which means that the, fu the function is concave up, then f is going to have a local minimum. And let's see why that is. If I have a graph, there's obviously a minimum there, which I know, okay, so they're telling me f prime of zero here is, um, f prime of c, excuse me, is zero. So I have a horizontal tangent right there at my critical value and I know that it's concave up. So the function is opening concave up. Then because it's opening up and I have a critical value at the bottom of that, um, of that function, it has to be a minimum. Likewise, if we know we have a critical value, so again, I'm telling you that there's a critical value, but this time it's the second derivative is less than zero, which means concave down, then right here, Critical value concave down means that it has to be a local maximum. Okay, again, that's a second derivative test. So it's just another way of determining whether something is a max or a min, but it's now based upon not only the critical value, but the second derivative, so the concavity. Note, the second derivative test is inconclusive because there's one thing we didn't talk about, if f prime of f, f double prime of x equals zero. If that's the case, um, it doesn't tell us anything. Or if f double prime of x is undefined, doesn't tell us anything. In these cases, if that's the case and the second derivative gives us one of those things, then we have to go back to the first derivative test, which is basically the first derivative, use your number line, all that kind of stuff. Okay, one thing I should mention before I go any further, that number line that we used is a great visual to help you figure out things for the um, um, increasing and decreasing local max and local mins. It is not admissible when it comes to AP as proof of anything. It's just a good visual for you. You're going to have to be more specific as to what's actually happening um, with the function around that point. So you'll actually have to state in words or state mathematically, but just saying see my graph or see my number, that doesn't work. That's not proof. Okay, let's go ahead and do a few examples. The first one will be very simple comparatively, then we'll get into some slightly more challenging ones. So we want to find the following four things. We want to find the intervals of increasing and decreasing, the local max and mins, intervals of concavity, and inflection points. So the first thing that we should do is we should say, okay, what do I need to get there? These first two things right here can be done from the first derivative test. So that's going to be done from F prime. Intervals of concavity and inflection points are found from the second derivative. So we would need F double prime. So we're going to need both of those in all these cases, which is why I've kind of laid this out for you. 
This is where you are absolutely going to want to simplify to the best of your ability before you move on to your next step. So in this case, this is polynomial. This will not be very difficult. Let's take the first derivative because we know we're going to need that for intervals of increasing, decreasing, local max, and mins. So let's see. The first derivative is going to give us negative 6x plus 3x squared. Okay, I'm going to want to go ahead and factor that. Um, so I can have, let's see, I can pull a 3x out, which is going to leave us with negative 2 plus x equals 0. I guess I could have factored out the negative as well. Might have made it easier. So my critical values are going to come from whatever makes this 0, whatever makes that 0. So either x is going to be 0 or x is going to be positive 2. So those are my critical numbers, 0 and 2. I know I'm going to need a second derivative to get concavity and inflection points. So let's take the second derivative. That's going to be negative 6 plus 6x. Okay, I'm going to need to set that equal to 0 to figure out um, where I could have potential inflection points. So basically inflection points are going to be just like a critical value. So let's go ahead and figure that one out. So um, you could factor out, um, you could factor out a six here. I think we can just add six to both sides and divide by six. So you're gonna get X equals one. That's the potential location of an inflection point. And I say potential because remember, we have to test around that to see if um, concavity changes around X equals one. So let's go ahead and do our tests here. So the first thing we're going to do, whoops, first thing we're going to do is set up a number line for our critical values. Because we're trying to find um, increasing, decreasing, and local max and mins. So I'm going to test a value which is outside of 0 and 2. So let's go ahead and test negative one. Again, I'm going to plug that stuff back into my factored form. I think it's easier. If I plug negative one into three X, I get a negative value. If I plug negative one into the X inside the parentheses, negative two minus one is another negative value. So a negative times a negative is a positive. The function is increasing on that interval. Plugging something in between zero and two, like one, Plug it into 3x, you get a positive value. Plug it into the parentheses, you get a negative value. So positive times a negative is negative. Decreasing there. And then something outside of 2, like 3, plug a 3 into outside and inside, and you're going to get a positive and a positive. So this tells me my intervals of increasing are going to be from, it looks like from negative infinity up to 0, and then again from 2 to infinity and my intervals of decreasing is just one of them which it looks like it is from zero to two okay i can also figure out my local maxes and mins okay if you just look at your arrows it looks like to me like you have a local max when x is zero so we're going to say f of zero because maxes are y values if I plug 0 back into the original function, that one's not too hard. That just gives us 5. You should be able to do that one pretty easily. We will have a local minimum when x is 2. So we'll say that f of 2. Now this one I have to do a little bit of work. So 5 minus 3 times 2 squared, that's 4. So 5 minus 12 is negative 7 plus 2 cubed is 8. So negative 7 plus 8 is 1. So there's your local minimum. Okay, now to do parts three and four, that's the concavity and inflection points. We need to do a number line based upon the second derivative. And that value was, that critical value there was one. So now let's test around one. Now this goes into your second derivative. So if I take a number less than one, like zero, I'm gonna plug it into my second derivative and test the sign. So if I plug 0 in here, I'm going to get negative 6, which is a negative value. And that's, I'm not going to draw arrows now, I'm actually going to draw like little almost parabolas showing that that's concave down, so it opens down. 
And then I'm going to test a number like 2, which is to the right of 1, back into the second derivative. If I plug a 2 in for x, now I get negative 6 plus 12. That's a positive number. So that is concave up. So now I have my intervals of concavity. Concave up, concave down. So it's concave up from 1 to infinity and concave down from negative infinity to 1. The only other thing I have to worry about is do I have an inflection point? And I do because concavity changes at 1 and the function was continuous at 1. So the last thing I need to write is my actual inflection point. IP, point of inflection, POI, you could write it any of those ways. It is a point. So keep that in mind. This is a point, which means it's an ordered pair, which means we need the X and the Y. I know that the X value is 1. I'm going to plug that back into the original function right here. Oops. The original function right here. To figure it out, to figure out what the y value is. So 5 minus 3 is 2, plus 1 is 3. So we have an inflection point at the point 1, 3. All right, and those are the four pieces of information that we needed to find. All right, this video is going to end up being quite long, so I am going to come back with a third video just to finish off the last two examples.